Today's show, Harold forms a band. Bill shows how to make a camp bed, and I'm going to cook with electricity. And now, here's the greatest thing to hit the television industry since colorization. The man everybody's talking about, and oftentimes in complimentary terms, the star of our show, Mr. Red Green! Thank you very much. Thanks for tuning us in. Uh, I'm your host, uh, Red Green, for the next half hour. I'll not only be your host, but I'll also be your guide and your translator. And up at the lodge, this is what we call a herald. <laughs> <laughs> and that translates as, I'm directing this show because the star is my uncle. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> been kind of a challenging week up here at the lodge. I've been uh, trying to get a little fundraiser going for a pet project of mine, which is namely uh, keeping the repo man off our backs. <laughs> so I thought I'd have a suggestion box. And the first suggestion I got was, why don't you make the suggestion box a donation box instead? Oh. Well, that turned out to be pretty stupid. Because what they did was they started donating suggestions. Okay? <laughs> and most of them you could never read on any television anywhere. But then there was one in there that struck me as a real good idea. Hey, you're wearing a new shirt. No, that wasn't it. It was, uh, somebody suggested we have a Las Vegas style... Wait, what are you wearing a new shirt for? What's the matter with the regular, you know, red shirt? What? Well, it's dirty, Harold. Anyway, this casino night seemed like I thought maybe this could really... No, work. what's the matter with the regular shirt, though? I mean, where's the other shirt? It's, you know, it's a regular shirt you wear, but now, no, where is it? What? <laughs> well, it's in the laundry, Harold. Oh, Relax. yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, you got a raise. You got a raise. Oh, yeah. Oh, since when is there extra money in the show's budget? There isn't, Harold. There's extra relish on my shirt. That's oh. why it's in the laundry. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, okay, yes. All right, oh, I know exactly what you're trying to do by wearing this fancy schmancy shirt of yours. You're just trying to add zip to the show because you think my direction is so bad. That's it, isn't it? Isn't it? No, but I like the sound of that. <laughs> so the casino night is a definite goal. We're going to get everything... Well, I'm just going to let you know that I don't need any of your cheap gimmicks. I have expensive gimmicks. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a lot of golf balls to put in your mouth. They make you special and the envy of your friends. But the main lesson here is don't fall asleep at the driving range. Hey! Oh, oh, get that away from there! <laughs> this week on uh, Handyman Corner, I'm going to show you how to make a low-cost, uh, extremely efficient, lightweight, entirely portable electric barbecue. Well, at least portable in the sense you can go anywhere that they have electricity. Uh, I got the idea from uh, one of these little units. You ever seen these babies? This is a little hot dog uh, cooker. you got uh, like a nail connected to the wire. You put uh, one end each end of the weenie and you plug her into the wall. And uh, by the time Bob's your uncle, you got your wiener burnt black as silver. And uh, I'm thinking to myself, uh, this could work on almost anything. Because uh, the point is, electricity can cook meat, which uh, any of you know who've ever stuck your finger in a wall socket. But I'm thinking, uh, you know, let's think a little bigger than that. Why can't we get electricity to, say, cook uh, a roast uh, or... Uh, not quite sure what that is. Probably a raccoon, I guess. Uh, and uh, all we need, maybe, is to just uh, get a little, little more pop to the electricity. Not just use your standard household current, but uh, maybe have a step-up transformer and take her up from uh, 120 volts up to, uh, well, how does a million sound? <laughs> and a transformer is real easy to build. It's basically just two coils of wire. So you take a coil of your normal 14-2 household wire, as we explained to you in one of our other episodes, and you drop a smaller coil of wire inside, which you can get out of, say, an old... Uh, electric razor, something of that nature. And these are darn easy to come by, especially while the guys are out fishing. So I just uh, pop the top off this unit. All right, now this, this, is, a, this is a good safety tip. Uh, when you're working with a screwdriver, don't ever put the screwdriver, you see why I did that? Don't ever put the screwdriver towards you. I hope you were noticing that, especially you, you young kids out there. Always have the screwdriver working away from you. I'll just pop the top off this thing. <laughs> Uh, all right, well, I uh, had to replace the fuse there. Uh, it was just a, actually, it was just a penny was in there, and it had melted right out of there. So uh, I replaced it with a nickel. <laughs> <laughs> 
should last five times as long. <laughs> but uh, the good news is that uh, uh, the whole uh, covering of the razor melted right off. So uh, now I can just uh, lower that right inside my outer coil. And uh, when I plug this end in, uh, we're going to get the million volts coming right out here. Now what I have to do is uh, use something as an electrode for the thing. Uh, something as a, what do you call them? Yeah, electrode, yeah. Uh, I'm thinking uh, I'm thinking golf club. <laughs> Just got to kind of break this in half here. Um, I would say go with the steel golf club uh, rather than the wood kind because the wood doesn't really conduct electricity all that well. And uh, although if you could get her going, maybe if you got like 17 bazillion gagillion volts through it, uh, to give you a nice hickory smoke flavor. <laughs> Actually, probably a bunch of you golfers who get over 100 all the time uh, have a whole set that looks like this. <laughs> now what we do is we're going to stick uh, an end of this in each end of our meat, so to speak, and uh, wrap our wires around there and uh, uh, seal her all up with the handyman secret weapon duct tape. And we're going to have ourselves a little beef roast. So I'll work on that. that get all hooked up there and you watch the rest of the show. And when I'm all ready, I'll have you come back and we'll put this rig into action. This is my favorite part of the show, because we get to expose those three little words that men find so difficult to say. I don't know. <laughs> and here to prove that point once again on the expert portion of the show is my Uncle Red and his best friend in the whole world, Mr. Bob Stuyvesen and Mr. Glenn Braxton. Here we are. Dear experts, for our 25th wedding anniversary, our silver anniversary, I bought my wife a brand new shiny silver socket wrench set. My wife burst into tears. At first I thought they were tears of joy, but since I've been sleeping on the porch for two weeks now, I figure she didn't like the socket wrench. Women say they want to be treated equally with men, and I'd, and I'd love a set like that. So what's wrong? What do women really want? All right. Uh, what do women want? Uh, well, uh, Glenn, you're married. What do you think? Uh, well, you're married too, Red. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. yeah, but you've got all the daughters, seven daughters, haven't you? I mean, uh, you, you, you know a lot about, more about women than I do. Well, a lot of them are, are still pretty young. They're girls, you know, so... Oh, Bob, you've been married six times, right? Four. Five, Bob. <laughs> oh, yeah, five, right, yeah. Four is what you say when you're playing golf. <laughs> Actually, do you know where uh, yelling four originated from? No. no. Well, the Scottish, you know, they used to do a lot of... Uh, Excuse me, and, uh, you're just getting a little off topic there. Uh, you know, the question is, what do women really want? Right. All right. Oh, yeah, what do yeah. women want? What do women want? Mm, boy. <sighs> <laughs> well, actually, in reference to the guy's letter, uh, I broke a soccer wrench just last week. You're kidding. No, no. How'd that happen? Well, I, I was uh, I was taking uh, the uh, rear suspension off this old bus I bought to turn it into an RV, oh, yeah. and the torque, bang, snapped it right in half. Oh, my God. God. Wow. What do women really want? <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Women. Women question. <sighs> women. What about world peace? Oh, yeah. Peace. I would think so. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. World peace Political is good. Thing. Oh, yeah. Sure. World peace. World peace, yeah. Survey says world peace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. World peace. <laughs> No, actually, uh, I knew a guy who uh, broke a, a socket wrench once, too. Get out! Yeah, he was uh, working on a snowmobile. I don't think wow. he'd ever actually take Small it. Small world. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What do women really want? Right, yeah. When they want something, those yeah. women, what is it? Yeah. Yeah, that's a... Okay, well, we got world peace. <laughs> well, you know, actually, as a husband and, uh, and a father of seven daughters, as you said, um, <clears throat> I know around our house that uh, what what... The women want in my house is a, a new VCR. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, you're onto something there. Yeah. My wife, jammed up. my wife, my wife would love a new VCR. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, yeah, a, it's a yeah, funny yeah, thing yeah, that you mentioned yeah. that because my last wife, she had custody of the TV and the VCR. Who? Oh, oh, that's that's the there. That's there. Oh, we got it. That's 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 there. That's yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Women want a new VCR. <laughs> and world peace. And no socket wrenches. It is autumn. Trees shed greenery and stand barren. Nervous animals scurry about, glancing skyward. Warm waters turn cold as blue steel. Meanwhile, the rocks sit, silent, solid. Rocks are exactly like my Uncle Roy. 
if they had gas in them. <laughs> now I got her all hooked up and ready to rip there. Uh, the black wire brings your electricity in, your white wire takes your electricity out, and I got the ground wire hooked up to the meat thermometer. <laughs> now I ran an extension cord uh, up from the boathouse using whatever pieces of wire I could find, because it's on a separate circuit down there. And I upgraded from a nickel in the fuse right up to a quarter. <laughs> so uh, I think we're ready to power up and uh, eat like a man. <laughs> Ow. Looks like we'll be having chip beef. <laughs> Not bad. A little underdone. Should've used a six iron. <laughs> anyway, the women don't find you handsome. They should at least find you handy. <laughs> well, by golly, this casino night feels like it's gonna rake in a lot of coin for us. Everybody's pitching in to make it feel like a real Las Vegas style thing. You know? <laughs> Old man Sedgwick says we should have an aerial circus like they do at that circus circus casino. So uh, he and Moose Thompson are going to sit up in the rafters and play frisbee. <laughs> I see you're wearing your new shirt there, huh? Yeah, I'm wearing my new shirt, Harold. Would you rather be looking at relish stains? That would just remind you of your complexion. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're really saying then is if Harold was a better producer, we wouldn't have this wardrobe problem. That's what you're saying, isn't that? <laughs> All right. <laughs>